Hi there, Velma from Work Bigger here, continuing our four part series on how the brain impacts your burnout, your overwhelm, and your decision making. To recap, in this series, you're going to learn one, what's causing your burnout and exhaustion, and two, how to work through that burnout so that you can make more progress with your goals. Last week, we talked about how your mind operates in two ways. We talked about the away state and the toward state. We said that the away state is driven by more negative emotions, right? When you are in the away state, you are in fight or flight mode, or you're working from a place of fear or frustration. So emotions that drive that state are feelings of anger, frustration, sadness, right? When we're in this place, it's more difficult to think clearly and to make decisions. When we're in the toward state, on the other hand, we are more in a place of possibility and opportunity. So emotions that drive the, the toward state are emotions like joy, happiness, excitement. When we're in this state, it's so much easier to, to, to again, to think clearly and to be more creative and to work well, well with others. So think of being in a toward state as moving toward opportunities and solutions and being in an away state as moving away from opportunities and solutions. If you haven't watched last week's video, make sure that you catch it because we dig a little bit deeper in the, with, with uh, these concepts. Today, I want to talk about how to move into that toward state because it's really difficult to make decisions unless you're, you are in that toward state and you can't make big decisions around your career. You can't process your career change unless you're coming from that more place of possibility. So here are two ways to start shifting into a toward state. First, I want you to start observing your feelings. This is really hard to do and requires practice because sometimes a lot of what we're thinking and feeling, it's automatic, it's unconscious, right? And also we're a society that suppresses our emotions. So oftentimes you can't even speak to exactly what it is that we're feeling. So what I'm asking you to do here is it's definitely challenging, but I want you to try it and we're gonna break it out into small steps. And I, I really just want you to start with observing your feelings, right? So next time you feel sad, just stop and start to think about what thoughts am I having that are causing me to feel sad or what event happened that's causing me to feel sad. So you have a greater understanding of what's triggering that. Next time you feel joy, same thing, right? When you feel that, that uh, toward emotion, right? Stop and start to think, what thoughts are causing me to feel joy? right? What happened that's causing me to feel joy? And just write them down. Nothing fancy. Don't block out time to do this or add this to your to-do list. Just make the decision to observe. Next time you feel an away or a toward emotion, that's it. And just observe. Next, after you observe that toward or away feeling, next time you observe that joy, that frustration, that sadness, I, I want you to allow your feelings. This is especially important for those away feelings, the, the negative feelings. Allow yourself to feel sad or to feel anger or to feel frustration. This, this is important because when we feel something negative, our immediate reaction is to make that negative feeling go away. And the more that we want that negative feeling to go away, the more that we resist it, the harder it is, it's counterproductive. So next time you feel down or scared, just allow it. Just say, you know, I hear you, I see you, I feel you, that's it. And I wanna add that, I, I saw this with one of our clients and this was important. I wanna add that if you're, you know, working on something that's challenging, you're working on something new in your work, it's completely possible to feel two opposite things at the same time. And I actually, I feel this way about parenting as well. When I became a new mom, I had two opposite feelings at the same time. I had exhaustion and confusion and I had complete joy. So if you're at work and you're working on something new, it's completely possible for you to feel scared and insecure and also excited and happy, right? So keep that in mind as you're starting to observe your feelings that it's completely possible to observe you know, or to, to hold two opposite feelings at the same time. Self-awareness is the first step to change. So after you watch this video, let me know in the comments, one, what comes up for you when I ask you to allow and observe your feelings? And two, is this something that you can try for yourself or does it feel scary or strange? Let me know in the comments, I'd love to get your thoughts. 
Next week, I'm gonna share a framework to help you identify your positive and negative triggers. So we're gonna put some more structure around these away and toward feelings that we experience. And also a couple of reminders. One, if you like this training and you have a friend who can benefit, please share it with them. And lastly, we're opening applications for the Work Bigger community again in September. So if you're looking for deeper support and coaching and are ready to make a big change in your work and life, you can learn more at www.workbigger.co forward slash join dash us. That's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. And I, look, I really look forward to reading your comments and getting your feedback and also seeing you here next week. That's it for now. Bye.